Good evening YouTube, Ian here from Cool Ice Charge Cases and Power Supplies. I hope you're all having a nice evening and uh, you're keeping well and potentially you're all ready for the Christmas festivities that are soon upon us. I um, hope uh, Santa's got you a nice big present. I did put my uh, order in with the big man upstairs but I don't know if I've been good enough this year but we'll wait and see. Anyway, enough of the fun and games. I'd like to show you another charge case of mine that I've built if possible. Um, some of you that have obviously, or those of you that have seen my videos before will notice uh, this case follows a similar sort of design layout to another case I did recently, housed in one of the Nanook 940 cases. This case has turned out to be quite a nice case actually to use. Uh, it's in the nice graphite colour as well, which is a little bit different than just plain black or orange, which is quite good. So this customer, uh, Ross Northcott actually, he'd seen this other case build and said, I like the layout of that Ian, but I'd like to alter a couple of things and potentially then as well use obviously different chargers, the ones that I've got. And in this case, he's got a pair of uh, Revo Electric's PL6 touches. So he's got two with obviously the bump controller built in on the top of them. So the plan was to obviously get those into the case itself. I'm gonna let my arm relax a little bit there while I'm gassing away. So the idea was to incorporate the two PL6 touches in the deck as normal with obviously access to the bump. So that was quite simple in itself because obviously the bump does, it's literally just a PL6 with a separate bump controller mounted on top almost. Um, so whatever the cutout is that I've got for the bump controller in the past, I can replicate that over to the deck and indeed I have. The only difference I had to make there was a uh, difference to the cutout depths, the pocket depths on the back side, and also to the mounts. Again, a 3D designed and 3D printed uh, mounts uh, to obviously hold the charges in place, and <coughs> little spaces as well to compensate uh, for for the for the height difference. So, I'm, so the, there was method to my madness there actually in that. I wanted the top of the bump controller, or should I say, I've got the, the, the touch screen itself and the, 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 the thin bezel around the outside of the touch screen as flush with the deck as I possibly can. And then I've recessed the back of the 10 mil polypropylene to obviously accept the added uh, size of the bump controller casing. And then of course then I've had to allow uh, with regard to the, the charger holding to account for the depth that the charger needs to be held at to maintain um, a, obviously, uh, a, a reasonable hold on the charger itself so it doesn't rattle around because we don't want that and to obviously then to make sure that there's no undue pressure on it as well so after a few careful measurements and everything else it's, it's worked out really well so I've created some standoffs then that are bolted, that again, 3D printed and bolted to the underside of the deck with through holes then so that my existing PL6 3D printed design mounts that I've got work with this charger because the charger itself is the exact same size. It's just if you, if you lock, if you chopped the bump off the top, it would be a, a PL6. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I didn't want to obviously reinvent the wheel for want of a better word. I already had PL6 uh, design 3D printed clamps, so I wanted to reuse them and obviously then just, I made a couple of changes and additional couple of items, if you like, to f facilitate their use within this case. So we've got the usual deck, we've got the two PL6 touches, which I have <coughs> within reason obviously centrally mounted them in each half of the, of, of the lower deck, if you like. I, I couldn't, with what else I wanted to put in this case, I couldn't realistically center the screens uh, in each half of the lower deck. So I've obviously centered the charger. So the screens are slightly offset if you want to, if you start to look at the, uh, the position of the screens compared to the outside of the deck and stuff. But it, it works out quite well, it looks good. The bump area is obviously still very accessible, which is good through the deck. So the bump tags are going to work. So I'm quite pleased. So we've got the two chargers in the middle. <coughs> we wanted, I'll see the wireless charger, which I've done before. 
So I've incorporated a wireless charger into the center of the deck between the two chargers. I can't, when I come around and show you the case, I can't show you that working, I'm afraid, because the only wireless charging device I've got, apart from the y zone, which is inside, is the phone I'm using to record this video with. So I can't necessarily put that down and keep, keep video filming. So I've got wireless charger in there. We have incorporated one of my excellent ice meter protection circuits into the case. The method, the reasoning behind that was is I've put a, a, plus 20, a plus 12 volt and a plus 25 volt output point on the side of the case, which I will show you again. And the customer also has a, a, an iCharger Duo. I'm not sure if it's a 308, 406, but it's obviously a Duo charger. And one of their weaknesses, unfortunately, is when using server supplies with a multiple server supplies in series should one fail abruptly during the charge cycle it can damage and kill the eye charger so the ice meter was obviously developed to alleviate that fear and uh, obviously due to the additional benefits it brings to a case build the customer specified can i have one fit in so that's fine so as with one of my previous case builds <coughs> i've incorporated it sub flush to the deck again using a 3d printed holder so that the the knob is just proud of the surface of the deck but not enough then to interfere then with the lid build because this case obviously has a lid build as well so height uh, from the top of the deck was obviously limited there was only obviously a small amount of space there so I couldn't have anything protruding up too high above the surface of the deck so <clears throat> that's in there that's incorporated nicely I haven't added a strip of LEDs yet, but I may do that over the weekend, to be honest with you, so that it then lights the inside of the lower case half, uh, and then of course then you'll get the faint glow coming out through the air inlet slots, which you'll see on the front line of the deck, as per normal, which is what I prefer. So I've got the air inlet slots along the front, and then two 95... 70 radial fans I think or 993 33 radial fans at the back so they're drawing air through the case out the back of the charges of the power supply and then obviously up at the back of the case deck there the lid build didn't again lower half of this this is where we differentiate or went a slightly different route compared to the other case this was based on in that the customer didn't specifically want storage within their case but they wanted um, the Revo Electrics logo, like I've done before, so I've incorporated that in the, in, the, in the lid build. They also wanted, obviously, the twin USB charge port, pretty standard, that one, and a cigarette lighter socket as well for additional charging capabilities when it comes to wireless devices, handheld devices, or I'm guessing probably uh, GoPros and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> we incorporated that in the upper deck it was also asked if we could get some form of wireless speaker in there. So I said, yeah, that's fine, it's not a problem. He said, and Ross said to me, he said, right, well, I've got the one I'd like to put in. I'll order it, I'll send it to you. Can you do it? I said, yeah, that's fine. So it arrived, <coughs> and you're gonna see it. It's a nice little speaker, actually, but it's quite a funny shape, if I'm honest. It's obviously just, it's basically like a rectangle with rounded sides kind of thing, but it also curves um, on the front and on the front face which is the the speaker grill side and the back side as well so that was i haven't been able to necessarily account for those curves very much with the 3d printed holder that i've designed for it but what i did want to incorporate is when the wireless speaker is in its cradle as i call it <coughs> it then charges so i found a magnetic connector lead and a little adapter that obviously plugs into the micro USB port on the back of this speaker. And then, again, double, triple, quadruple checking my measurements before I printed. When the speaker then is in place, it automatically then, the clasp magnetizes itself to the little adapter and the speaker then starts charging. So when the speaker is in its cradle and the case is on, it will charge. So that, I thought that was quite a nice little feature I wanted to incorporate and, and it's worked out well. <clears throat> Again, a little two-piece design, the main cradle, which is then bolted to the back of the, the lid build quite nicely and securely. And then I, I got a little small floating plate, which I did allow a little bit of movement in, but I didn't touch wood, I didn't need it. I got the dimensions right to obviously hold 
this magnetic connector and you're going to see it when I turn the camera around because I've got to stop talking soon. One of the other criteria though was, and I've literally just done it today, I've been deliberating over how to do it for the last couple of weeks if I'm honest, amongst other little jobs and stuff that's come along, was while this magnetic connector did hold the speaker in place, there was a little bit too much weight there for me to really risk it so that I needed to have something that was neat and tidy to hold the speaker in place when the lid was closed. And I was bouncing around ideas, shall I use some more magnets? Then I disregarded that idea because I thought mm, magnets and then interfering with the speakers and the speaker magnets, probably not a good idea. And in the end, the solution came to me today and it's, I'm actually really pleased with the way it's worked out, which I'm gonna to explain to you in a minute. So I tell you what, I think I'll stop talking for now because you guys obviously don't want to see my face for too much longer. I'm going to turn the camera around. I've got the case there next to me. It's actually residing on my laser cutter. And then I'll talk you through a couple of the points on it there. And uh, hopefully you'll like what you see. Let me turn it around. Now by looks at it. Oh yeah. Just to make sure. Last time I did this, I hadn't pressed the record button, but I have. <coughs> right. So we've got the Nanook case. Graphite grey. Again. I'll start on this side. So... Obviously we've got the we've got two PL6 touches in there. So the one on the right hand side, this is the output for that one. So we've got my 3D printed holder there. So we've got positive and negative to suit the MPA boards and then obviously the balance connections there. And again, that's my little custom PCB that my electronics wizard designed and made, though it designed and has made for me for the last couple of years. So we've got the usual uh, JST PA, I think from memory, which is what Revo Electric's used to doing. And then the JST XH9 pin. So, and then also they're both nine pin connectors, should I say. So they will use, so they will cover up to the PL8s nicely. On this side as well, we've also got the 24 volt output. And again, using one of my uh, 3D printed Super X holders there for the 24 volt output. At the back, customer specified the AC connection on the back so I'll just show that there and I've got it connected so I don't have to faff around while I'm trying to video film come around the front nothing on the front we've leave that there as it is then on the left side again we've got the left hand charger PL6 touches outputs there and the plus 12 volt and of course I've made the little lasered legends for those I think it just finishes you off so hopefully they'll stay there nice it's quite a nice double-sided tape that's holding them in place so that should work quite well come around the front we'll open the latches if I open them and fling them down it's one of the nice things about this case they actually lock into position we'll lift the lid and there we go just pan back a bit so you can see it we've obviously got the lower deck Nothing too major down here. Originally I was planning storage like the previous case that used this same sort of layout but customer didn't want any. So we uh, omitted that and obviously then we've put the ice meter in there. Again, you can see there's the 10 mil polypropylene and uh, the ice meter is just flush, almost flush with the underside of that. And it's got its own legend plate and it's actually <laughs> where I covered the, the deck and the little legend plate in carbon oh let's see if it focuses it actually just about lines up that was probably more luck than judgment but i'm quite pleased with that so we i've got one of the pl6 touches because obviously i'd never seen this charger in person uh, and, and while i would love to have one of every charger under the sun i just it, cost effective it just wouldn't work for me so he sent me one so i've fitted that in place and then that's ready to go while his charger in the middle and then of course then we've just literally got the, the opening for the display on the right hand side because when he gets uh, this case through the post he'll then obviously fit his second PL touch in there and lower the deck, put the screws back in which I haven't fitted yet and, and away he goes. Got the cooling fans. Now previously in other cases I was actually cutting out some metal mesh and then spray painting it black and then obviously putting it in with a little lock with a little 3D printed rectangular locking ring on the back which worked well but it was an additional time and effort to cut the uh, mesh and everything else then it I actually watched a YouTube video of a, a guy he'd made a custom-made power supply and 3d printed the case 
and he 3D printed the mesh for the, the grill, for the fan, for the cooling fan. I'm thinking to myself, you know what, that's a really good idea. So these are, these are now 3D printed grills and they just slot in the recessed holes that I've machined in the back. And it's worked out quite well. See, I've used the Prusa for those. So we've got one there, we've got one there. Great. I might even mess around next time and make something a little bit different shape, put like a honeycomb shape in there, whatever, make it look a little bit, a little bit different. So I'll see if we come up a bit, we've got my usual cable chain, uh, protecting the cables going from the lower half of the deck into the upper half. And in this case, we've got a USB lead, which is this magnetic lead I was explaining about. And then obviously just a, a, a positive and a negative wire, silicone wire, to obviously take 12 volts up into the lid to provide 12 volts for the uh, USB charge port on this side, which is the first time again I've seen one of these. It's one of those metal machine ones, looks quite nice. With And it's actually got the little uh, LED voltmeter in it as well, which is good. This side then uh, is the cigarette light socket. A little bit of a change here. Um, I do need, this is, TPU, so it's flexible, three D printed. Admittedly, again, it was in the week. I had to recover the lower deck. I didn't realise that with the supplied um, dust boot cover that on here, obviously there's a ring that obviously holds it in place behind this cigarette lighter socket, which is about a mil and a half thick potentially. So then this face comes forward towards us, towards the camera, about a mil and a half. Then of course, then by the time you've got the, the thickness of the dust cover then on top, when I closed the lid, it actually left an imprint in the lower deck, and just, just in the carbon film. It, it must have only been perhaps about half a millimeter to a mil at the most, but it was enough that it left an imprint in the carbon deck, and I did carefully try and warm it up to see if I could remove it, and it, it didn't. So in the end, I gave up, recovered the lower deck, Remove the dust boot then from here, which allowed then this unit to sit further back onto the deck. And then, unfortunately, I've only got blue flexible for the moment. I've got to print another couple. Uh, I'm going to have to get some black and print some black ones. But basically, then that's a a rubber boot cover then for that, which is again removable. It took me about three attempts to get the size right because obviously with the shrinkage and stuff. But that works quite well in there. Oh, I think the blue looks quite good, but we'll see. I'll get some black. But then we've got, oh, I'll tell you what, we'll go up. There's the Revo Electric logo. It's a bit difficult to see. It's not lit actually at the moment because the case ain't on. I'll tell you what, let me turn it on. I've got it all ready to go after I flick the switch. <coughs> Don't know if we can get it. Sometimes catching the, oh, there we go. The ice meter is obviously powering up. And then if I press the button, start the output. The Revo Electrics is going to power up. And there we go, I haven't really played with it, I haven't set any presets. I can leave that for Ross when he gets it, and then pan back up. It's very, very difficult to catch this, but again, you've got the lit logo in the top, which looks very nice. Again, I made a slight change on this one, actually. I wanted, again, I'm trying to, I'm trying to promote the light, if you like, to more come out, because the, the letters aren't, aren't stuck directly on the white, background if you like there there's very difficult to show patch but there's a thin two millimeter piece of clear acrylic as working as a standoff if you like on each of the letters which I glue on individually um, there is a, another way of doing it but that's the way I'm trying at the moment until I work out in my head how I'm gonna do it the other way at this sort of size level but basically the idea is I'm I've got the white panel then I've got a two mil clear acrylic which is obviously hollow to obviously allow light into it and then hopefully out the sides and then of course then I've got the black acrylic letters then stuck on top and then obviously in the middle the red leaves kind of thing again so the idea is then with the the white behind it create I, I want a kind of like a halo effect around each of the letters and it just about does it well I would say it's great how I want it to be I've seen some other signs done by other people who use this in their you know, with their CNC signs and stuff. And I think they do it out of more, they do it out of a thicker, they do it out of a thicker, clear acrylic that transmits light better and then creates some form of mask around it kind of thing, which then obviously 
the, the halo light effect works a little bit better, but this one works really well. The only difference I made with this one compared to the last case for Adam was I spray painted the back of the white uh, piece black. Again, the idea is to stop the light coming through the white and then obviously just coming through the cutouts behind the letters so it just literally does what I want to achieve and it's kind of made it a kind of like a dusky view almost kind of thing so it's actually quite a nice effect but perhaps if you watched if you're one of those that has watched my other video for Adam's case and you've seen how the logo looked on there compared to this one please leave me a comment tell me what you think do you like both or do you not uh, anyway Back to the USB, so this one's quite nice, yeah, it's got the little USB, uh, the voltmeter built into it, sorry, so 12.3 because they're getting 12, 12 volts off the first power supply. And obviously the, the cigarette lighter socket isn't really going to show us anything, so I haven't got anything to plug into that to hand. And then in the middle we've got the little speaker, as you can see it's quite small. Um, I ain't measured my hand, but, well I say I've got small hands, but yeah, that's quite a nice small speaker. I've allowed access to the buttons from the top. Let me see if I can do that so you can get your fingers in there. Then of course then at the bottom as well, the idea was so you can obviously literally get, and I, I, I went slightly oversized, so you could literally get your fingers in there top and bottom to pull it in or out. Now, going back to further along at the beginning of the video, this is the holding bit that I was talking about. Now, originally I thought about having some form of O-ring going around with some little standoffs and I thought yeah, okay that, that would look all right but not brilliant when this design came up to me now basically it's just I've I took the deck I took the upper deck off today mounted it back on the CNC and then routed out a 21 millimeter circle with obviously a two and a half mil hole in the middle to about two and a half mil depth and then designed up these little 3d printed I'll call them cams because they, they are essentially so one side is straight and the other side is circular so it's semicircular on one side and straight on the other and then I've put the little tab there so basically you can get your finger rotate it round do that one come across swap hands rotate that one and do the same swap hands again just to, and then obviously the speaker then comes out and as you can see there's the little magnetic receptacle on the back of this one. If it gets the focus, is it going to get it? It got it. There you go. There's the little magnetic receptacle. Now that's removable. I have noticed it just lit due to the, the strength of the magnets. It's such a tiny magnet, but the strength of the magnets is brilliant. It ever so lightly pulls that out. So we may need to perhaps put a little bead of hot glue around the outside of that at some stage. But so far, it's, it's quite nice. The, the little color patch in the middle when I was messed around with it because it's curved. I stuck a bit of tape over the middle, so it's it's got rid of all the grease and everything else off it. That's why that looks a different colour. But if I go inside, you can see the housing. That's obviously the 3D printed cradle I designed. I put a little bit of felt, a little couple of little felt pads at the bottom to stop it rattling around a little bit too much. And obviously then there's the magnetic adapter in the middle, which is obviously lit by blue LED. So that's obviously mounted to the back of the case and obviously then you can probably just about hear it when I clip it in, there, you can actually hear it, it's, it's, it really does clip it and as long as I don't really shake the lid, I'm not going to risk it, you can actually close the lid and it holds itself in place but I wouldn't want to leave it like that if you're carrying it around. So the idea is then with these cams now, now it's back in place, you can just rotate the cams, one, two, obviously I like to make them as straight as possible. They might need a little bit of nibbing up as they get used a little bit because obviously they are going to wear or they are going to smooth out the, um, the the machined landing there if you like but so far so good and then of course then now I can't take it out so I can shake the lid and shake the laser at the same time and the speaker is not going to fall out. So job done and I don't know what you guys think but I think that looks really neat and now again I've turned it on I noticed the other day when I was turning it on I, I do like the, this 10 mil polypropylene because even though there's LEDs behind it which are shining up the polypropylene grabs the light 
and it's actually glowing. There's, there's two strips of LEDs behind this, behind this panel here, and they're actually facing backwards. So they're firing the light to the inside of the lid, and then on the back of the lid, I've obviously stuck some iridescent silver vinyl to act as almost like a mirror. So the LEDs shine backwards, and then the light then bounces back forth then to light the Revo Electrics logo. And at the same time, that's lighting the natural polypropylene material from the back, which is then giving us this glowing edge and of course then where I've now routed this out you've almost got almost like got like glowing ears it's like a little robot head there actually that's quite good actually if I put two eyeballs there that would actually look like a little robot head that would look, that would look quite cool and it just glows if I'd have put a strip at the bottom actually the bottom half would glow as well it's missing a bit of a trick there but but yeah this is this case is now done one more thing left to do really and that is for me to obviously do, oh, I've dropped some, dropped some dust on it. Oh, we can't have that, it's got to look good. There you go, right, done. Anything left to do now, and another bit. Anything left to do now is obviously to me to put the screws on the lower deck. And then contact Ross, which actually I'm going to send him the link to this video in a bit once I've uploaded it. And uh, say to him, your case is done, thank you very much for your patience because those that know me know I, I don't rush my cases. I'd love to turn these out one a week or one every two weeks, but I, I don't do them that quick. I'd rather take my time, make sure the product is 110% and good enough for the quality that I would have for myself before it goes out to my customers. So let me pan up and down a couple of times, show you guys the case. I'm pleased. I'm pleased with this one. It, it's working really well. It's going to look good. Customer's going to be happy. Job done. Anyway, I think that's it for now. I'd like to uh, obviously thank you all for watching this video. Again, if you're in the market for a charge case for your RC helicopter or UAV business or whatever, give me a shout. And obviously, if I don't see you or speak to you before, have a lovely Christmas, Happy New Year, and. Uh, I wish you all the best for 2020. I'll speak to you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.